In this video here, I'm going to talk about the GPIB bus interface uh, hardware. So somewhere down here, I have uh, there's one. The first uh, set of PCBs, I have uh, 10 pieces because that is the minimum order quantity from the factory. So although I just need one or two pieces uh, myself, uh, there might be some PCBs left over for, for, for you guys. Um, there should be another little PCB, and uh, this is the other one, this is the low cost version. Um, as you can see, there are less chips, uh, and of course I talked about that in a, in a previous video. And uh, yeah, the PCB quality that I received here is uh, actually a very good quality. I've been soldering components uh, all weekend, and uh, no problem whatsoever, the silk screen is good. Although uh, printed on with a dot matrix printer of some kind. And also the green solder mask has uh, no problems whatsoever. It's not uh, coming off when heating up the PCB. So uh, yeah, very happy with it. And uh, of course, just to show you, I have soldered the two boards here and uh, they're ready for firmware development. I have not found any problems with the PCBs whatsoever. All the footprints are correct. And uh, I was not expecting any issues either, because I do all my own footprints. Uh, early on, when I started uh, PCB layout and uh, electronics uh, in general, uh, I found uh, that some of those uh, manufacturer supplied footprints are actually uh, not correct. And yeah, it gives problems like the holes are too small or the pitch is wrong and you can't insert the components and you have to redo PCBs. Uh, it's not because the PCBs are really expensive these days, but uh, they were back in the day. And uh, also even today when you have a footprint issue, you have to uh, re-spin the board. So that is not really... Uh, that's not really nice. Uh, but the PCBs are good, uh, the parts fit very well, and uh, the next video uh, will be on the firmware development. So uh, yeah, stay tuned, and uh, thanks for watching.